The Riverside Royals are the number two team in the country. Uh, rising up over the ranks of teams like Alabama. Akron. <laughs> How is Akron number four? We are going to do a college football playoff if we were to get there. A college football playoff bracket. So we will have uh, the number one and number four seed taking on each other and the number two and number three seed taking on each other as well. Right now, that would be slated to be Alabama. I hope that is not what ends up happening. But as I've said many times before, I have had this game against UNLV on the schedule starred, marked for some time now. UNLV embarrassed us last year and we get to host them this year and try and do the same thing. They not only tried to run up the score at the end of the game, they beat us. They knocked us out of contention for the conference championship. And that is just flat out unacceptable. So we're getting our revenge today. That's the goal anyway. And if you watched last episode, you know we blew a 21 point lead against uh, Boise State. Not what you want, but we're not gonna do that this time. We're gonna get ahead early. We're gonna stay on top. We have a couple of guys visiting today. You guys saw those names up as well. But here they are, uh, notably at the bottom of the screen. I don't know why visit is scheduled still for some of these guys that are already here, but it's week 14. I've added Steve Lewis back to the board. He had locked this out previously, so I took him off. And I'm like, you know what? He's still visiting in week 14. I might as well add him back. And now he's not locked out anymore. However, we are down by a lot by a lot he's 99% locked going to Illinois but I figure might as well put 700 points on him New Jersey building up that pipeline and if we can get an extra a thousand points on him today plus the 700 weekly you know maybe there's a chance that we could somehow get Steve Lewis I'm not saying it's a big chance but maybe it could happen but some big visits today Tyler Adams is visiting as well Nick Ford so we need our DBs to make some plays for sure and then Derek Thomas in here as well. So we need Reggie Gonzalez to go for over 100. And that is pretty much it. So looking for a win. And then personally, we're looking to embarrass UNLV. And hopefully holding them scoreless will be the name of the game. Adam Daniel has moved up into the number two spot for the Heisman. So a big performance today. Maybe, just maybe, that pushes him to the number one spot. We'll have to see as far uh, as far as the award finalists go daniel number one for the maxwell gonzalez and daniel five and six for walter camp greg hall and craig jackson number one and two for the bidneric same for the nagurski davy o'brien we have daniel at eight Doak walker gonzalez at three Boletnikov, i don't think anyone's in here nope and then john mackey we don't really throw the tight end too much uh not much to say about our offensive line either but then Phil Walker's number two for the Lombardi. Need him to have a big game today. Best linebacker, Hall and Jackson, one and two. Thorpe Award, no DBs in the conversation, except for Bruce Clemens. Still on the back end. Last time we checked, he was there as well. Fitch is a Groza Award finalist somehow. And then for the Ray guy, nobody in there. But trying to get this win. Embarrassed UNLV in the process. And of course, need to accomplish those goals as, uh, goals as well. So trying to lean heavily on Reggie Gonzalez today. Need 100 plus rushing yards with the running back. That's where Reggie comes in. And hopefully our corners and safeties can come away with an interception or two, if that's possible. Last game of the regular season. Trying to defend the castle, defending the crown. And we need a big win here in Riverside, California at Royal Field. Let's get it done. Number two, Riverside against unranked UNLV. I really do not want to lose this game. Really don't. Can we complete the perfect season in regular season play? Find out soon. Warren has space to the outside. Not quite fast enough, but he's got a stiff arm. And it's a really good return to start things out. If he had a little bit of extra speed, maybe that has house call potential. But it didn't. Reggie Gonzalez, 100 yards today would be awesome. But we've seen some of these Mountain West schools play us really, really close. 
So, I mean, we can't, like, think this is too easy. We're not just going to run over the Rebels. Got to do a little bit better and uh, just play good football. And it's not going to be like, oh, we're only going to run the ball now with Gonzalez because we need 100 yards. We're going to get that over the course of the season as we rush for over 2,000 yards this season, courtesy of an Adam Daniel 20-yard pickup. But we're going to figure out ways to get Gonzalez to football. I love speed option for big plays with the running back. That happens quite a bit if they play the QB. But sometimes there's just not an, uh, you know, a real uh, chance to get it to the running back. Like on that play right there, probably running to the other side now. Like they kind of play both the quarterback and the running back. So it is really risky to play that pitch. And there was just no opportunity there. Speed option isn't like a cheat code, obviously. Doesn't work every time as John Humphreys doing what he did a lot against Boise State, which is just sitting down, running that curl route, and catching the ball, turning upfield. It's been very involved these past couple weeks, so might have to lean on him a little bit again today, which we have no problem doing, of course. Quick throw to Michael Ham. It's a first down. Playing the quarterback, that means Reggie Gonzalez will take it. And we're struggling to get big time yardage with him. But he's more of, and, and you've seen this if you've seen the Royals play this season, he's more of a just wear you down. Take a lot of carries and he'll eventually break that one in the fourth quarter and you're not expecting it. As Elgin Collins will stretch and be very close to the touchdown but can't get it. Don't have too much Elgin Collins remaining on the team. I believe he's a senior, so he's playing in some of his final games of Riverside football. Quick throw to Corey Warren. And that is a touchdown for Adam Daniel. Good start for Riverside. It's wide open, good throw. Love that, up seven nothing. Is this a little pitch? Okay. I forgot what this offense was gonna look like. Courtney Reese loses a yard. Is that Malik James making a nice tackle? It is, he's also playing in some of his final games. I believe he's a senior as well. Second and 11. Lines in motion. Shoot the gap there. Oh, run right past the running back. Lemon's getting stiff arm. That's a first down. Run left. Oh, a sick blocking down the field. We need to get him from behind. Okay. We do, but it's a 25 yard pickup by Courtney Reese. We're going to stop this before it becomes a real problem. Might have to run 5 2, but we need to just start shooting some of these gaps and take the running back out of these plays. Uh, quarterback keeps it this time. D okay. All right. Okay. I'm getting a little bit annoyed. <laughs> Just got to stop talking for 10 seconds and focus on making a play. Pitch right. Craig Jackson going to have to make the tackle, and he does. Joseph Brown, obviously, in there as well. Got to him first. That's just good blocking. <sighs> How is the offensive line from UNLV overwhelming us? That's what I don't get. We come out in 5-2, get a bunch of defensive linemen on the field, and they're still just running the ball down our throats. In 5-2, we should be able to just hit these different lanes with the, with the uh, linebackers as Craig Jackson has tied the record for sacks in a season. Adrian Chandler, remember, had 12 last season. Hasn't played nearly that much of an impact, but Craig Jackson gets his 12th. Who would have guessed it? Craig Jackson with 12 sacks. But yeah, 5-2. The whole design of this is have every offensive lineman, a defensive lineman to get in the way. And then we'll just shoot different gaps as we force a throw away. And that should be a good way to stop the run. Third and 14. Certainly not going to be a run. But it's going to be a pass to line. So we'll break a tackle and end up breaking one too many. He probably would have had forward progress if not for the broken tackle that they're going to go for it on fourth and one. And why wouldn't you with this running game? But we got to trust our guys. 5-2 out here again. Shoot a gap, make a play. <sighs> Phil Walker, man. We can't dive at the center there. Fourth and one. Guess what? Fresh set of downs on the one now. You know, I think you can point to San Diego State as our biggest rival, but I'm not sure there's a team in the Mountain West I hate more than UNLV. As Greg Hall shoots the gap perfectly, Reese will lose four. 
But I hate UNLV. I really do. I hate Colorado State as well. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below who is the team that you hate the most in the Mountain West. Like, who is, who is Riverside's biggest rival? Let me know. Run left. Tall in pursuit. Clemens trying to save a touchdown. And they're going to say he did it. Reese got in. Why not? Are we really going to need our timeouts in the first round or first half? I don't know. I'm comfortable challenging that there because I don't think he was in. He looks really short. And I think our defensive line can really shut these guys down. He looks well short. Surely you cannot call this a touchdown. Look at it. That ball is certainly not over the line. It's not even touching the line, which would be a touchdown, but I don't think even the tip of the ball reversed. I'm shocked that was reversed, by the way, because they never change uh, spot spots there, but it is third and goal. Ball is on about the goal line. It looks like they're going to probably run this. Third and goal, let's shoot a gap. <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> They got it on the next play. Listen, we just got to be better and we got to be able to shoot these gaps. Didn't do it. Didn't happen. UNLV's tied things up. Warren has space. Good juke to the outside, but again, just doesn't have the speed. Only three down linemen. Can we get blockers out? Perfect. Gonzalez. No, I wanted to juke back right, not left. I always do the inside out juke. And I guess it didn't register that I went back to the right. We just did a little hop step to the left. Not what I wanted. And you guys always see me do that double juke. I never just do the single one, like ever. As Gonzalez will catch that for the first down. So I found out the tough way in that one that triangle wasn't a button. I thought Michael Ham was triangle. He was R1. So that's each triangle this play. Nice. Try to throw it to him quickly and uh, <laughs> didn't work, obviously. Third and 14, they're pressing. You know what could be good here? Is Humphreys on a dig? Of course, we're going to look over the top. We're going to go deep down the field. Corey Warren, and that pass is intercepted. Just underthrown by about 15 yards. I hate this team, man. I hate UNLV so much Brumfield gonna throw and that's broken up by Malik James nearly intercepted it'd be nice to get an interception every now and again third and nine we are going to the rare dollar look here we almost never run dollar and I mean maybe we should <laughs> ZL Griffin for 14 here's the thing is we get our most DBs on the field here. So, you know, in theory, our best cover guys, and they just didn't cover that well. Looks like they might pass again. First and 10. And let's see. Quick throw. Same thing, but Clemens forced the football out. Craig Jackson dives on it. And it's going to be Riverside football. There is a flag. That's going to be on the defense, which is UNLV in that case. So that's going to be Riverside ball, plus 15. What an end to the first quarter here. Big hit by Bruce Clemens, jarred the football loose. And we really could capitalize here. Nice move by Gonzalez. Wish he was a little bit faster, but that's still a 17-yard run. You like that. Strong safety's coming up. Just run by him. Doesn't matter. Linebacker makes a tackle. Daniel on the move. Good throw for him, but we're going to take off. Adam Daniel fumbled out of bounds. Doesn't matter. Like how Adam Daniel somehow had the football to hand it off to the ref after that play, by the way. As we'll find Corey Warren in the end zone. Is that his second touchdown of the game? Not bad. He was injured for a bit. Had Barrett Reed playing a lot more. But I feel like Corey Warren is just more consistent. Even though Reed is a big speed threat, obviously. I think Warren is the better receiver. Both teams with 108 total yards exactly so far. It's a little strange. Back in 5-2, because this is looking like a run. 
fullback in the game. They're going to throw. And that pass is incomplete. They're going to call that a fumble, actually. Adrian Chandler dives on it. I'm confused. Oh, that football was already out. Chandler didn't knock it down. Well, we, of course, need a second look at that. What happened here? Oh, my goodness. Who got a hand on that? Greg Hall. Greg Hall put his hand on the football. And when the quarterback tried to throw... I mean, maybe Craig Jackson impacted that too. But it was stuck in the running back blocking. I don't know what happened there. Either way, that's not a forward pass. That's Riverside football. And another turnover for UNLV via fumble. Daniel on the move. And he fumbled. Okay, fumbled again. This one... <laughs> This one does not get out of bounds. We should have, but Adam Daniel, uh, constantly aggressive, took the hit. And yeah, that football was moving. All right, so UNLV has it again. Run up the middle. Jackson can't make the hit. Guess who's there? Greg Hall, obviously, to clean up. Just what he does. Cleaning up the trash. The Hall monitor might graduate and become the trash man. Greg Hall, second and nine. He's a beast. Here's a run. Hall in the backfield. And Craig Jackson now making the tackle. Greg and Craig are such a dynamic duo. Greg Hall gets, you know, the majority of tackles and whatnot. As that somehow caught by Phillips. I, uh, it wouldn't let me strafe. <laughs> the gameplay in NCAA, I think everyone looks back on fondly. But when you actually play it, it is fairly flawed. It's fun, but it is flawed. Like, in those situations, that should be, like, an interception every time. It just doesn't really let you make a play on it. Run. Ooh, counter. And Craig Jackson making sure that goes nowhere. His third tackle for loss of the game. As I was saying earlier, I'm not even sure if I finished the thought. Like, Greg Hall's obviously the big tackles guy. Big tackle for a loss guy as well. But Craig Jackson is so good, too. And kind of flies maybe a bit under the radar. Just because he never really leads a team in tackles. Good one for Alan Hart there. But he's awesome. I mean, he leads a team in sacks. With one more sack this season, which I think he'll probably get. He will break the record for Riverside sacks in a season. Like, he is incredible. Just gets a tackle there to force fourth down. I'll be honest, I'm already a little annoyed that UNLV has even scored in this game. I wanted to just shut him out. Wow, that's a sick punt. Wanted to just shut him out, but it's clearly not going to be as easy as that, which is fine. The guy's backed up to the three and a half yard line. Safety coming up. We just need blocks on the other side. Good block. Decent move. Gonzalez, good speed. Stiff arming. Let's go, Reggie. It's not a bad run. <laughs> Obviously. Hayford, the tight end, gets a rare catch. You know what the problem with Blake Hayford is? He drops the ball too much, so I never actually want to pass to him. If he didn't drop the ball so much, I think he'd be a big contributor on this team. I know you could say the same thing about Michael Hamm early on, right? But Blake Hayford doesn't have 94 speed. That's the difference. Good counter. Reggie Gonzalez makes a man miss, runs through a tackle. Another good run from Reggie. Starting to get things going here in the second quarter. And that is intercepted. Going for Michael Ham on the corner. And they played it very, very well. Second interception, second incompletion of the game as Donnell Morris played it perfectly and picked him off. Don't throw many interceptions. Adam Daniels has been pretty good this year. But have been throwing some down the stretch, which obviously is going to need to be cleaned up if we're going to perform well in any type of college football playoff game. So we just got to clean some things up, obviously, as Willie Hollins makes a rare, nice play. Brumfield to throw deep, and Tim Washington picks it off again! I thought only once in a blue moon... But he has two interceptions in back-to-back -back games now. Or two combined, I should say. One in back-to-back -back games. 
I don't know if there's a great way to say that. He has an interception in back-to-back -back games. There you go. He usually drops him every time. Play action. Oh, they're, they're blitzing. And Adam Daniels sacked. Everything covered down the field, too. It's going to be third and 25. Need Michael Ham to just beat him over the top. That's what it's going to be. If we're going to move the chains, it's going to be via Michael Ham. A oh, circle is wide open. We couldn't throw it to him. No! Elgin Collins, I think, wide open. Was obviously looking at the left side of the screen first to try and hit Michael Ham. Ah. Uh, it's been rough on offense so far. It really has been. The screen. Joseph Brown all over it, but good tackle on the back end. Is that Bobby Anderson? I believe that's Bobby Anderson, number 23. Joseph Brown right there, but I don't know if he was going to be able to make that tackle. Brumfield going to run, and he is brought down. Is that Willie Hollins again? I feel like he does nothing, except for when he does something, he's all over the field that game. This is like the second game, I feel like, where he's even made a play. And in the previous game where he made a play, he made a bunch of plays. So, I don't know. Maybe he just gets going in one game. He starts feeling it. But he's been very quiet this season, I think, overall. It is third and 18. Oh, and they're going to waste this clock. That's okay. It's only eight seconds. We'll save the timeouts when we're on offense because we're getting this football back. No conversion here on third and 18. Just keep them in front of you. And Bobby Anderson can't make the tackle. Greg Hall pushes him out of bounds. And that should be a punt. Phillips back to return. Going to have to make one man miss. There we go. It's maybe more than one. Phillips, great return. 32 seconds, but we do get 18 yards. Three timeouts. I know Adam Daniels itching to make a play after that interception. His second one of the game. I don't blame him. Come out here and let's do something. Air it out deep over the top. Ham with a step. He makes a diving catch. Michael Ham, one deep. Good ball, but, you know, a touch overthrown. Otherwise, that's a touchdown. Still uh, plenty of time, though. 20 seconds, three timeouts. And we are sacked. How can we not get the throw off, man? Dude, we're, we're under pressure. Under fire. It's going to be third and 20. These sacks are killing us. Third and 20. Could be a shot to the end zone here. We're going we're gonna to do it. And that's nearly intercepted. <laughs> it's going to be 4th and 20. John Humphreys had it on the uh, the corner too, but we went to the end zone. And they don't think we can nail this field goal. How far away is it? 48? Yeah, we don't have that. We don't have that with Fitch. Do we take a shot to the end zone? Or do we think Reggie Gonzalez can do something here? Yeah, I mean, that's just that's just really not giving us a chance. So we're going to throw the ball. Ham up the seam. It's Hammer Collins for a touchdown. Throwing it to the end zone. And that is nearly caught by Michael Ham. But that is the end of the first half. 14-7. Riverside only up by a touchdown. UNLV trying to stay in it. Trying to play spoiler and ruin our season. We didn't play nearly well enough in the first half. Although I think that's been the case the entire year for us. We'll try to be better in the second half, obviously. I feel like our defense has done a pretty good job. We forced a couple turnovers already. Interception, multiple fumbles. But our offense, I mean, Adam Daniels turned over the football three times. Two interceptions, a fumble. And he fumbled one out of bounds previously. And then we've been sacked a lot. So our offense has to play a lot better. I think that starts up front with the offensive line, giving us more time to make a good decision. And we'll see what the second half has in store. And you know, Malik James kind of has been that DB that we've relied on in the past because he's been a reliable tackler, but uh, didn't do it there. Alan Hart couldn't. There's Malik James, but it's 15 yards. And we pitch, all in pursuit. It's a nice tackle, but Reese still gets four. Keep playing the quarterback. The problem is we don't have guys fast enough on the outside right now to get to the running back to take that option away as well so he doesn't pitch it. 
We're going to get better, but they got to start running that more if we're going to see it and adapt. Brumfield to throw, and that's going to be intercepted by Hall. Started out usering. He's actually got a bit of a return here. I don't know if you can call that an easy read. User pick. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. I don't know if you can. Because I switched off and then switched back on. Bizarre. Either way, another interception. Although this one, not for a DB, and we need him for DBs. But we're not complaining. First and foremost, we want the win. There's Corey Warren. Nice catch. Reggie Gonzalez, nice moves. Five yards. We're nearly at 100, right? Okay. In you know, about 27 away. So I don't know that we're going to do it on this drive. We could, but I'm not sure that we're going to. And we're sacked again. Dude, I'm trying to throw it away so much earlier. Third sack by Seth Robinson. I just didn't see that we were pressured until, boom, right there. Then I tried to run away. Realized we couldn't. Tried to get myself some more time dropping back. And then was, you know, trying to throw it away. The opposite side, I get it. It's just frustrating as Daniel's going to take off again. This time has space. Daniel with speed. And Daniel, not going to fumble, picks up 23. But man, we're getting sacked relentlessly. Third and four. Who wants to make a play? Gonzalez? No. Pass batted away. Uh, that was a bad route combo. They were all over that. And we are not in field goal range, apparently. Fourth and four. We are 0 for 1 on fourth down. Let's trust Reggie Gonzalez. We need blocks, obviously, but we got him. Nice move, Reggie. Oh, and he breaks through. Gonzalez stiff arm into the end zone. He got it. 26-yard touchdown by Reggie Gonzalez. Touchdown machine for the Royals this year. Nice move. He slipped through with the stiff arm and had the speed to get to the end zone. Riverside finally with another score, making it 21 to seven. Defense has played well. The offense has been really, really not great. Pitch left, Brown in pursuit, Hall as well, and he'll make the tackle. Look at Greg Hall in space. Was there ever a doubt? Now he had some tackling issues a little bit last year. Not this year. He's been all over the field making plays. Third and 12. Can't get complacent now. It's gonna be a screen. Craig Jackson nearly picked it off. Oh man, Craig, you gotta come away with that play. Would have been easy reads, but instead, UNLV will punt. Second and one. Gonzalez breaks a tackle. Gets a block. Falls forward for eight. Safety coming up. He's getting blocked, though, and that's a face mask. Yeah, thank you. There's a flag. Second and five. Work and play action. Nobody bites. Thrown for the tight end, Blake Hayford. He makes a nice catch for the first down. Under pressure again. See, so barely cut the throwaway off. Speed option on second and 10. Daniel will break a tackle. Daniel, run, man. Stop holding the football like that. You're not pitching anymore. Only two for six on third down today. Not really a great conversion rate. Ham beat him off the snap. Good throw, and he dropped it. Michael Ham, dude. Oh, uh, why are we dropping the football today? Guys are just dropping the ball. We're up 24-7. It's, it's not really a concern right now, but what if we were playing Alabama? Because we might be. Second and one run. Force it back to the inside, but Reese stumbles forward for a big first. Brumfield going to check down. And that was uh, bizarre, but he's going to lose a yard. Greg Hall, of course. The Hall monitor, making sure he's not going anywhere. Oh, it's a pitch right. Hall in pursuit. He makes a nice tackle. I believe that's his 11th tackle of the game. It is. He has three for loss. It's third and four. And they're starting running back. Reese is injured. Kent into the game. But he's got fresh legs, though. So that's not necessarily a good thing. It's third and four. They're going to run the ball here. They won't even snap it. It's going to be a run. Hall in pursuit. He made the tackle. Kent is short. 12th tackle of the game in UNLV in the third quarter from midfield at the end of the third quarter 
on fourth and short, they're gonna punt. That's insane to me. That's insane to me. How do you punt in that spot? Look at the moves by Tyson Phillips. He breaks a tackle. Phillips with speed. Ah, and he's caught from behind. Yeah, we've been uh We've been put under pressure a lot today. Would like for less of that, ideally. But our offensive line is just kind of being outmatched. Not much more to it than that, I don't think. Safety coming up. Good block. Gonzalez. Good solid run. And that brings us to the end of the third quarter. Riverside up 24-7 over UNLV. It isn't the murder that I wanted, but we are solidly beating them right now. It's not really a close game. And it is second and five. Throwing for Michael Ham for two yards. We're running. Daniel with space. Gonzalez is going to need a big block here. All right, block the guy behind us. All right. It's not really the correct move, but okay. Now, Reggie Gonzalez is having a great game, but this isn't exactly the Heisman winning performance we might have been looking for from Adam Daniel. He hasn't been terrible today by any means, but he hasn't played like a Heisman winner. Just hasn't. Two picks, a couple fumbles really, lost one of them. Second and three, getting Reggie involved in the pass game now. But look at that coverage, man. So good. Third and two. Tried to get it. No, no, no. Thank God you saved the touchdown, but trying to make the throw. We're under pressure again. Throw out at the sack is picked off. God, dude. I mean, UNLV is ending Adam Daniels' Heisman chances. It's been a really annoying game on offense. Still scored plenty of points, but we have done anything but dominate. Throw it. Oh my goodness, just a floater and a broken tackle. Clemens is getting a broken tackle as well. Can anyone bring this dude down? Oh, Reggie Gonzalez, by the way, injured. Bruce Cernum out for the game. Been a while since we've seen one of those. It's a big gain for UNLV. It's a big loss for us, losing our leading back. Second and eight run. Wow, we didn't get that. Clemens just shoves him. Everyone's shoving him. Can anyone actually tackle Courtney Reese? He's only averaging four and a half yards per carry. Not like amazing by any means, especially not what we've dealt with in this series. But he feels like he's a tank. Maybe been tackled for loss a lot by Greg Hall. That's got to be a pick. And it's picked off. That's a strong safety, Joseph Brown. And he's got room to run. Brown now into Riverside territory. Past the 30, 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Joseph Brown with the pick six going all the way back. Doug Bumfield sucks. Joseph Brown taking it downtown. Big pick six for the safety. And that's the embarrassment that I wanted against UNLV today. And there is Alabama, led by Bryce Young. They beat Auburn in the Iron Bowl 34-24. Trey Sanders with a good game. And yeah, you know why Alabama won that game? It was at Alabama. <laughs> Not at Jordan Air. At uh, Auburn, Alabama. But it is 31-7. We are up over UNLV, and we're looking to take it home. The screen, and we're all over it. That's going to be another pick six. Never mind. Easy reads. User pick. The cat in the hat. 20th turnover force of the season for this Royals defense. And that is little known first name Sullivan yes of course Sullivan Malcolm Sullivan yeah the junior outside linebacker of course how could we forget now that's not the DB play that we needed but not gonna complain slant to him he's gonna be just short we're gonna move into the hurry up now I like this defense that they're in it's one that allows plays <laughs> second and two slant ham dropped it how about catch it third and two Throwing over the middle, and that is complete to Elgin Collins. Was hoping that pass would actually be where I wanted it to be. 
and not back towards the defender. And it was. Placed perfectly. Good ball from Daniel. Good catch by Elgin Collins. And this is what running up the score is against UNLV. That deserves it. 38-7. to Now we're starting to get it going. Four interceptions for Bumfield this game. Second and 10 now for UNLV after a Joseph Brown pass breakup. Going to be Malik James missing a tackle, but Tim Washington saving the first down for now. Are they really punting? Greg Hall just made a really nice tackle to bring up fourth and inches, his 13th tackle of the game. And they're just giving up. Well, please, Riverside, just run the clock out. Uh, no. UNLV trash. Rebel scum. We're going to destroy you even more. I don't know what to say other than... I do not have the time to throw it to anybody that I want to throw it to. Down the field, John Humphreys one-handed snag. Great ball on the run from Adam Daniel, but what a one-handed catch by John Humphreys. But also, can we get a block? Can we get a block? I mean, that safety's coming up. You gotta pay for this. You have to. Over the top, Ham with a step. Ham with the catch in traffic. What a catch. 50-50 ball. I mean, the safety's beat and somehow got back to make that play almost. Great individual effort from Michael Ham. It's first and goal. Can we get Elgin Collins another TD? He's a senior, man. He has a step. And he's got the touchdown. We're going to keep running it up. I hate you and LV. Should be 45 to 7. Face mask. Wow, face mask at the end of that play. UNLV with an extra 15. I don't even know how Marcus Kerr was in position to make that tackle. Doesn't really matter, just uh That's why they have the ball at the 14 yard line. Third and seven. 30 seconds remain in the game. There is nothing I want more than to get the football back into score. At this point. Bruce Clemens interception. We're taking it out. Clemens makes a man miss. Gets the face mask. And Bruce Clemens starting to become a bit of a ball hawk. Yeah, we've dropped a few interceptions lately, but we've been catching a lot of them. We'll take the 15. Bruce Clemens with another interception. Daniel on the run. We're going to take off here. Juke back inside and... Clock's going to stop momentarily. We still have our three timeouts. But remember, UNLV embarrassed us last year. If you think we're just going to kneel the ball, it's not going to happen. We're going deep down the field. Michael Ham can't haul it in. But that is the game. 45-7, crushing the Rebels. That's the kind of game I was looking for. We weren't dominant. In this game, despite the 45 to 7 score, our defense was amazing. Greg Hall, player of the game. I mean, we can look at his stat line in a bit. It was unbelievable. We also complete the undefeated regular season, dominating Mountain West play with a couple of big ranked wins as well. We are ranked at number two for a reason. Now, I know what you're thinking. Bengal, Coach Gene Dangus, you really haven't played anybody. Haven't really played that good of a team this year. And you're right. But we pretty much all but qualified for the college football playoff. So time will tell if this team is legit. Game stats, Adam Daniel, 23 of 35, 216 yards, four touchdowns, but three picks, was sacked six times. Reggie Gonzalez had 13 carries for 133 and a touchdown. He was very good overall. And then receiving, Michael Ham was the leading guy, but did also have four drops. Now, they weren't really four drops. Some of them were those contested jump balls that he didn't come down with. But it wasn't really the focus today. Greg Hall, 16 total tackles, four for loss, an interception. Uh, he was amazing. Craig Jackson also had eight tackles, three for loss, and a sack. Two tackles for loss for Willie Hollins, who had a sack as well. And then inter interceptions, we had five. This is the most we've ever had in the game by a bunch. Malcolm Sullivan, Greg Hall, Joseph Brown, Bruce Clemens, and Tim Washington. Bruce Clemens also forced a fumble, recovered by Adrian Chandler and Craig Jackson. 
it really is tough to pick a defensive MVP this game. Joseph Brown played really well. Bruce Clemens had an interception and a forced fumble. I mean, Greg Hall was all over the field. Craig Jackson was amazing. Had a sack, a bunch of tackles, multiple tackles for loss. Fumble recovery. The defense was the story of this game. Even Syracuse beat Maryland. They were kind of a fake ranked team, but Tulane back ranking then, uh, ranked again. We beat them earlier. Number 18 in the nation. They just crushed Southern Miss, but that's also Southern Miss. As TCU upsets number nine, Iowa State. Crushing their college football playoff dreams. No shot they get in now. And let's hopefully see some good news in week 15. We're on by, but I'm looking for some commitments. And I'm looking for some updates on some awards. And it's a pretty big week. Steve Lewis did commit to Illinois, so we wasted 700 points on him. But we had to try. Didn't really matter at that point anyway. Derek Thomas visited our school, as did Brian Bradley. But neither of the running backs have decided to commit at this point in time. Did get John Holt, junior college transfer. Not quite sure what to do with him just yet. Based on our current defensive line depth. But we're going to figure it out. Tyler Adams, amazing run-stopping defensive end commits. And Nick Ford as well, out of Alpine, Utah. So we can take Steve Lewis off the board. We got close in the end, but couldn't get him. Couldn't get to the offseason. Andy Harris, or um, we saw, but Tyler Adams, 88 block shed. Pretty good block shedding um, for like a five-star type player, let alone a three-star. 76 finesse boost, 75 power. Good speed. I mean, he's just a solid player. Nick Ford, I'm really excited about. I don't know that we're going to build a Utah pipeline or anything like that, but just a good player. Good speed, good coverage already. I think someone that we can probably look to redshirt and have a really good player long term. And then John Holt, he's a redshirt candidate as well. We only get him for two seasons, but if we redshirt him, that obviously extends. He's got great power moves, great tackling. Block shed's pretty good. But we've got some good depth there already. As we take the lead on Chris Williamson, probably go up to 700 points there. There's Thomas Peoples. I know everyone knows the legends of Dennis Peoples on this channel. So you probably want me to get him. Minus 10 to Maryland. We're closing the gap, but we just can't get him. So setting up the points like this, just dumping a bunch into a bunch of different players. Ryan Bradley's so close to committing. I took him off of 700 and just put 400, which is still a lot. And we have actually dropped to the number three team. Akron has passed us somehow. So currently, it's going to be Akron against Riverside. Oh, that couldn't have worked out better. Bamba drops to number four. Oh, I'm not complaining. Reggie Gonzalez, by the way, onto the Heisman finalist list. Daniel staying at number two. But even though we got knocked out with an injury, Reggie Gonzalez on the list. At a Waxahachie, Texas. Tough name to say, but I got it. It's Waxahachie. And Greg Hall was an NCAA Player of the Week for Week 14. 15 tackles, 4 for loss, interception, beast. And will advance to Conference Championship Week. Very successful season. 12-0. And we're ready for big things in the future. But this season is far from over. Brian Bradley and Walter Spicer both commit. Brian Bradley was a running back I really wanted. And we have made it to the conference championship. Of course, ranked in the top five. And we'll be taking on Utah State. So recruiting is done till the offseason. This is where we stand on Mike Johnson. Josh Watts has not decided to commit yet. We've taken the lead on Christian Mason. Derek Thomas did not commit. Might get him in the offseason. Brandon Newell will be a little bit of a fight. Trying to get Eric Hoffman. Bubba Johnson, we're keying in on, of course. And then, of course, trying to get the kicker and the punter as well. But it should be a pretty low-key offseason for us. It's just going to be, can we get Christian Mason? That's the big one. And can we get Mike Johnson, who I also would like. And then some of these other random players as well. But Walter Spicer's solid depth to have. He's just a whatever player, but might be able to develop him a bit. And then Brian Bradley's big because he's really, really fast. Decent trucking, decent juke as well. 
I like what he brings to the table a lot. And for someone that doesn't really value playing time a bunch, we might be able to redshirt him season one, no problem. But that's going to do it for this episode of Riverside Royals. Up next is the conference championship. Then we have some college football playoff action. You know, obviously we got to win first. A loss could really take us down a notch, but things are looking good. We'll go over some of the other bowl matchups as well and conference championships, I should say, before the bowls. And that'll do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Taking it back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud.